five months of political ping pong, but this morning, my friends, you're waking up to the wonderful news that the government's Rwanda bill is finally set to become law after the Lords decided they would no longer oppose it. Well, the policy should be given royal assent over the next few days, and the Prime Minister says that this should mean that flights will take off within 10 to 12 weeks. The Home Secretary says it's a landmark moment to stop the boats. The Act will prevent people abusing the law by using false human rights claims to block removals. And it makes clear that the UK Parliament is sovereign, giving government the power to reject interim blocking measures imposed by European courts. I promised to do what was necessary to clear the path for the first flight. That's what we have done. It's you, Jeremy. <laughs> Talk TV's political... Co Why was this out there waiting for you? Uh, sure. Talk TV's uh, political correspondent, Alicia Fitzgerald, is here in the studio. Also, James Hansen from Times Ready. Good morning, both. Good um, morning. I'm going to start with you, Alicia, because what right. I'd like, because we're all going to say the same thing all morning, I suspect, uh, let's have the facts on what happened last night before I sneeze. So, yesterday morning, Rishi Sunak... <laughs> oh, okay. Really? Crack on. Could you have held off for a second? <laughs> no. Um, Rishi Sunak delivered a short press conference early in the morning, and it's something that they've, he'd been deliberating whether or not to do for a few weeks now, but I think he just wanted to buy himself some time to yeah. be able to deliver this conference and say for sure that the House of, Law, um, that the House of Commons would sit late last night mm -hmm. until the bill passed. So what happened was the, the bill got passed from the Lords to the Commons for the final time, pretty much, and Rishi Sunak basically said that everyone debating the bill had to stay for as long as it took for the Lords and the Commons to agree, and that's exactly what happened. So eventually, this bill has passed. What does it mean? Let's put it in layperson's terms. What does the bill tell us? What do we know? We had arguments about is Rwanda safe, but what does it basically say? Well, it pretty much deems Rwanda a safe country. The whole point in this legislation was to override what the, the foreign courts and the UK Supreme Court uh, deemed Rwanda to be uh, unsafe to live in. So this is basically the government trying to subvert that and say that Rwanda actually is a safe place to live, and that's what they've done. And James, what does it mean? Mean to be a safe country under this well, definition? Well, this is one of the big contentious issues and of course a lot of lawyers and we may still get some legal challenges saying under international law because of the ruling from the Supreme Court that said that Rwanda actually isn't a safe country there could still be issues of course the government are trying to get around that with a bill but it's worth saying there are still three big challenges politically here for the government. Number one is any further legal challenges and we expect some charities for example to launch individual challenges when there's one person who for example is told right you're on a plane to Rwanda they will launch an appeal on behalf of that person. Secondly who's going to actually charter these flights is it going to be a commercial airline what are the reputational risks involved in that is it going to be the RAF and then thirdly, even if they manage to get these flights taking off, will it have any impact on the number of people crossing the channel in small boats? The government is convinced it will. It believes it will be a deterrent effect. But we don't know until it happens. And politically, that's a really big question mark for the government. Do you think the, the public, guys, will vote or judge <coughs> the Tory government on this? Uh, they seem to... I mean, we've talked about it repeatedly. Sunak seems to have chosen this hill to die upon, which I find extraordinary. I mean, I nail my colours every single morning. I, 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 I want the problem resolved. I don't believe this is the answer. I think we should process and, uh, our own applicants. I think we should, I think we should have a system. As we, the, the, I was saying yesterday about the passport office. Mm. Three years ago, it took you six months to get a passport. Now you get one in three days. They need to put up, set up a processing centre, train people and pay for that so these 170,000 people either stay here or go home. That's a fact. I don't... I, listen, I don't understand it. I, I never have. I don't understand it at all. You're basically saying we can't clear up our own mess. I think there's two ways to look at it, and I think both kind of have legs. One is is that the this is the one that the government will want people to think is that they are trying to stop illegal migration. This will be their way of saying, you know, at least we've tried. Labour yeah. haven't actually tried to do it. So look, we've got this far in the scheme. We've really, really got. We we fought so hard in the Commons. We've done all this just to try and make it work. Whether it actually works or not is then the second part of this, which is. The government are really celebrating the fact that this bill passed yesterday. But, as James says, we don't actually know how effective it will be yeah. as a deterrent. And Rishi Sunak, actually, I thought quite surprisingly, set himself quite a high bar for the public. He was asked yesterday at this press conference what he would deem a success in terms of the scheme. Is it getting one flight off? Is it is it 
To, is it yesterday? Is it getting the bill through? And he said, success is when we totally stop the boats. And that's a very long way off from where we currently are. So he's effectively saying... It's easy to say that because he's not probably going to be around to actually try and carry that out, is he? he well, this is probably part of the, the politics of it. He can say, basically, when a general election comes and if Labour do get in, he can say, well, look, we got two flights off to Rwanda. Actually, actually Alicia, we've got, we've Go got a soundbite of him. This is, this is soon out yesterday. Was this post that it being passed? Or... No, it's pre. OK, I pre imagine. or post. There we go. Well done. For almost two years, our opponents have used every trick in the book to block flights and keep the boats coming. But enough is enough. No more prevarication, no more delay. Parliament would sit there tonight and vote no matter how late it goes. No ifs, no buts. These flights are going to Rwanda. The first flight will leave in 10 to 12 weeks. Now, of course, that is later than we wanted, but we have always been clear that processing will take time, and if Labour peers had not spent weeks holding up the bill in the House of Lords to try to block these flights altogether, we would have begun this process weeks ago. Here's something I want to say to both of you. You're, you're political I swear animals. those flags get bigger and bigger every no, he time. Just gets, he gets smaller, mate, he smaller, just gets smaller, shorter. Smaller. Um, if the Labour Party are so convinced that A, it's unpopular, and B, it's going to mm. fail, why did they block it? Why didn't somebody yeah. in the Labour Party go, do you know what, let this go through because Sunak's going to fall on his backside? It's interesting the language they use when they attack it because Labour are aware that the public do have serious concerns yeah. over the levels of illegal immigration. They do. But the language they use is they criticise how effective this policy will be. They say, they're not saying, oh, this policy's outrageous, this policy's morally wrong. They're saying this policy won't work which is a, a slightly cleverer way of attacking it because you're signalling to the public, look, we also want to bring down the number of people crossing yeah. the, the channel mm -hmm. in small boats, but we just don't think this is the right way about it. It's interesting on Rishi Sunak's determination on The optics on this are issue. quite interesting, aren't they? I almost wonder if he's trying to do... I don't think this will work. He's trying to do what Boris Johnson did over Brexit. You know, yeah. when you had all those <clears throat> votes in Parliament and <clears throat> uh, he was getting legislation knocked back and then you'd have legal challenges. Where they, and, and Boris Johnson said, look, I am determined to get this... But, but this, is the bit I don't, this is the bit I don't get. We saw that press conference before and, he, and he's not very good at speaking, is he? But he was saying, tonight's the night, we're all going to... Why last night? Why not three weeks ago? Where did he suddenly develop a backbone? Why did he suddenly go, I'm going to get this passed? Why didn't he like well, Boris? The, because the Lord stopped. No, no, but why him. did he get to a point last night where he knew it was going to be all right? The Lord's just been beaten down it, out of boredom or what? So, sadly, it doesn't work like that. It kind of gets to the point where, ultimately, Rishi Sunak has the ultimate power. He does. And the precedent right. is that, in the end, if there is so much kind of loggerhead uh, disagreement between the two chambers, the Lords have to just kind of give in, pretty much, to what mm. the Prime Minister and what the government say. So, I think why he didn't do it sooner was because it would have seemed a bit undemocratic if he'd intervened sooner. The moment the Lords had said, oh, we don't like this, and he'd gone, no, 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 well, shh, we like this, so you just stop, that would have come across really badly. So we had to give it some time, let the Lords have their say, and then yesterday put his foot down. So around 150 judges have been lined up to deal with these deportation claims, which begs the question, mm. why why weren't they lined up earlier to deal with the backlog of it reached 170,000, yeah. right? Yeah, hurrah. Also, how much has this plan actually cost so far? What will it end up being per person? Well, it was 400 million a couple of months ago, wasn't it? So you're, you're talking about up, yeah. you know, up to potentially a million pounds per person or a, a hundred thousand pounds, depending if it's the 400 or 4,000 over to make the, the first token. six months. Yeah. And also, you know, one of, one of the thing about the whole issue of migration is it is complicated and we need to be clear when we're talking about asylum seekers and then, of course, if they get their asylum application approved, they become refugees. You've also got legal migrants as well. But actually, a lot of people have concerns over the level of legal migration, sure. which was you know, up around 700,000 last mm. year. OK, you might deal with people crossing the channel in small boats, and there are relatively high numbers, but we're dealing with thousands of people crossing the channel in small boats I could compared with to five hundreds minutes. of thousands coming here legally. So when people complain, for example, about the impact of immigration on public services and housing, etc., they're not just talking about people crossing the channel in small boats, they're talking about legal migration. Oh, right. mm. And the government, you know, if they want to address people's concerns, would need to look at ways of dealing with that as well. Well, thank you so much, Alicia Fitzgerald and James Hansen from Times Radio for joining us this morning. Let's